guys, it's Alicia and welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking scary things. Big, huge, scary things. We're talking books that intimidate me. This is a serious, serious subject. I mean, there are books on my shelf that, that just like the sheer magnitude of the book or knowing what's coming just your heart isn't ready for it or even just like a feeling that you don't even understand you're just intimidated to pick up this book it happens today I'm going over some books that are on my bookshelves that may or may not be intimidating to me. They are. They're very intimidating. Gah! Book one that I'm going to be talking about is The Writing Desk by Rachel Hawk. This book intimidates me just a bit because one, it's kind of long. Let me see. It's 400 pages, which I enjoy long books. They're just kind of rough to pick up because it takes a little bit of time to read a large book. But on top of it being 400 pages long, it's a dual century um, book. So you get his historical part, but also a modern day part. And these books are kind of intimidating to me because I like contemporary and I like historical, but I lean more towards historical. Um, so it's just kind of weird to me to see dual century books. The next book that I'm going to be talking about is My Heart Remembers by Kim Vogel Sawyer. This isn't a huge book, I think it's like 300 and some odd pages, let's see, 343. So it's not like a huge book. What intimidates me about this book is the time period in which it was written. This is based around the Orphan Train, which I haven't read many um, in this time period. Like, I've read books in the time period. It's based in 1886, but I haven't read a ton of books based around the Orphan Train. Does that make sense? So reading a full book where it's literally about the Orphan Train. Also, another thing, some of these books are kind of intimidating because I haven't read anything by this author before so to have a book like this straight from an author that I've never read before is a little people normally stick to the same authors that they enjoy the same time periods that they enjoy but one of the things I'm trying to push myself is to read new authors and things that I normally wouldn't pick up so hopefully I'll be picking this one up soon but for now it kind of intimidates me but the next book that intimidates me is Five Brides by Eva Marie Everson. And again, I've never read anything by this author. I've never heard of her before. On top of that, it's pretty big. <laughs> like, it is 453 pages. This book is, is pretty thick. It looks really good, but on, like, it's from five different perspectives, I'm pretty sure. And that's just like a lot of bouncing around. And but I'm very excited. I love the idea behind this book. And I want to read it really bad. <laughs> but I'm just so intimidated and so nervous. But hopefully you will see this on in a wrap up at some point in the year. The next book that I'm going to be talking about is Fair Play by Deanna Giss. This book is 433 pages, so it's a bit on the larger side. Um, I've read books by Deanna Giss before. However, I'm a little intimidated when books are based in Chicago Fair. We have a couple books based in Chicago and based around the Chicago Fair. And I'm just a little intimidated by those books in general. It's weird because, again, my dad is from Chicago. I've talked about this before and I literally live like 30 to 45 minutes from 
downtown Chicago. I think the thing is, I don't know much about the history of the Chicago Fair. I don't know much history about Chicago at all. Um, I'm not a city person. So I don't know much history about it. You'd think I'd want to learn about it, and I do, but like a sheer, the sheer size on top of something that I don't know anything about. It's a bit much. It's the next book is Where We Belong by Lynn Austin. And again, magnitude. Her books intimidate me in general. Like, I've never picked up a Lynn Austin book. I'm counting, like, I don't count the author's note or um, the acknowledgments or discussion pages. Even though I read through those, I'm talking the end of the story. This is 470 pages. It's big. And I've never read anything by Lynn Austin. Again, her books, for some reason, they're always huge. And they just kind of scare me a bit. I've heard of wonderful things about Lynn Austin, so I'm pretty sure that my fear is unfounded. And, like, it's not rooted correctly, and I just need to get over myself. Cool country. So... It's based off of two sisters, and they start off again in Chicago. And they end up going to the Ne Desert. So please forgive me for my uncultured self. I don't know these things. They go from the United States to some other country with camels and things. And stuff like that just kind of... Like, I tend to shy away from it, and I don't know why, because I've read a couple dual country books and enjoyed them, and I love to learn about different cultures, and I love to learn about different histories. I don't, don't know why I shy away from them, or I'm intimidated, or I just don't grab them. So again, I'm hoping to change that in 2018. I'm wanting to read it. I've heard fabulous things about this book, so we'll see. But at this moment in time, I'm a little freaked out to pick it up. The next book I'm going to talk about is the first book in a series. I have book two and three, and I also have another series by this author. Here's a fun fact, though. Um, I've never read any of these authors, this author's books surprisingly, and I don't know why because I follow a blog. Um, inspired by life and fiction. I'll link it down in the description. It's wonderful. Everybody should check it out. I love it. Um, and it has quite a few authors that I have books on my shelf of. Like, they write for the blog. I hope this makes sense. But I haven't picked up their books. But this is one of the authors who writes on the blog, and she's always making me laugh. I love reading her blog posts. And she's actually pretty big in Christian fiction, and I feel really bad for saying that I haven't read any of her books, kind of like Lynn Austin. Like, I'm really sorry, but it happens, you know? And that is To Whisper Her Name by Tamara Alexander. This book is huge! This book is 473 pages. The thing is, this book, like, the, the print is kind of small. Like, it's single-spaced. It's all conjointed together. It's just, like, a full page of words. And I guess if I enjoy the book, it's going to be great because that's a lot of info. That's a lot of booky things. Kind of scared to pick it up. One, I haven't really had time to pick it up because, again, it's huge. And I just, like, I'm kind of scared. I decided to read the series, but I'm a little intimidated to start the first book. You're going to think I'm crazy. You're going to you're gonna be like, oh my goodness, who's inhabited Alicia's body now because we're not talking about historical fiction anymore. Yeah, I know, we're actually getting into a different genre of books that intimidate me. Yay! I told
talking about the choosing by Rochelle Decker. This is a dystopian novel. It's another series, but I this book is 424 pages. Now, the thing about this book is dystopians overall kind of intimidate me. Um, because it's a lot of world building, especially in the first book. And you're reading about something that is like a complete work of fiction. I think I enjoy historical fiction just because like these things actually happened. If I want to know more about this, I can read up on the actual history that happened. Or contemporary fiction, you know, these things happen. Hallmark movies happen. It's still like a work of fiction, but they're more realistic. It's realistic fiction. But dystopians and fantasies and things like that are like a complete work of fiction. And I admire any author who can do it and do it well. Because there's a lot that goes into it, I'm sure. Uh, you have to be very creative to write for this genre. Book one in a series like this normally is a lot of world building. And it's a lot of information. Also, Rochelle added a cast of characters. So, like, it's just a lot of people that you need to remember. <laughs> this is based in the year... 2257 so it's a futuristic dystopian so again this lady has to have the craziest imagination and I don't know it's just a little intimidating for me to read dystopian type books again not a genre I normally pick up but I'm stepping out of my comfort zone this year so I don't have to get over my intimidation yes the next book that I'm going to talk about is also dystopian, and that is Unraveling by Miss Sarah Ella. Um, <clears throat> I read Unblemished, and I just, this book I'm not intimidated by the size because I'm not even kidding you, the story blows by. A January pick for a book club that I'm a part of, and Oh my word. Like, oh my word. Like, that's all I can say. I was speechless. I, one, loved the book. It was fabulous. Two, I just, I was speechless. Like, I was in a book hangar for days. I'm pretty sure that kind of put me in a reading slump because I'm really having a hard time picking up other books right now. Um, but like I still think about it. I'm just kind of intimidated to pick this up because I'm not ready. <laughs> Book one wrecked me. Like it killed me and I'm just not ready for number two. This is YA and I'm, again normally don't pick up YA. But ah! Sarah Ella did such an amazing job world building again. Um, ha normally happens in book one. This is book two in a trilogy, Unbreakable, comes out this year. <sighs> I, it's such a great book, such a great series, and I really, 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 really want to read the book, but I'm so intimidated that it's just going to kill me, and I don't think that I can handle that right now. Like, I'm still trying to get over book one. I just, I don't know. I, I'm going to need, like, a month or two to recoup from that like I couldn't just jump right into this book not at all so I think I'm gonna give it a couple months and then before book three comes out because again I'm gonna need a couple months to recoup from this book I'll read this book and then be ready for Unbreakable that's the plan but at the moment it is super intimidating because I know that it's going to kill me I know that I'm going to be dead I'm going to just Nope. No more Alicia. She died because of the Unblemished Trilogy. Rest in peace me. The next book that I'm going to be talking about is another YA. I believe it's classified as YA. And that is Frank Preddy's Hangman Curse, which is the Veritas Project. It's volume one. 
and I don't know how many books are in this series, but I'm pretty sure that it's his YA collection. Like, I'm 99% sure. Um, again, the, the book isn't that big, but I'm a bit intimidated by the storyline, like the plotline. I'm intrigued. Do not get me wrong. Very intrigued. But I'm a bit conflicted as to if I'll enjoy it or not. I believe it's like based in high school and there's like mysteries and crimes and unusual occurrences and people think that like there's ghosts or something. I don't know. Again, not something that I normally pick up. I don't even know how to classify his work. I've literally only read one book by him and it was actually, uh, he wrote it with um, Ted Decker. I wrote Red House and that one was freaky, freaky stuff. And I have quite a few of his books, but they just kind of freak me out to be honest. I'm not sure. The last book that I'm going to be talking about is The Visitation by Frank E. Peretti. A hardcover. Again, don't normally read them because in and of itself, intimidating. On top of that, this book is massive. It's 519 pages. I think if I read this straight through, it'll probably be one of the biggest books that I've ever read in paperback form. Um, that wasn't a collection because I don't really count that as one book. I count that as however many books are in it. Um, but yeah, this book, I have had this thing for years and I have not read it. A lot of information and I think I just have to be in the right mindset to read his books. And I'm normally not really in, hey, let's freak myself out kind of mood. So this is definitely a book that intimidates the fire out of me. But I keep it on my bookshelves because I do definitely want to read it. And I think I might be able to get through this at some point. It might be a book that I have at like two books going. I'll have this book and then one to keep me grounded and keep me sane and so I don't lose my mind. So at some point this year, I hope to have finished this. 500 plus pages. Can we do it? We shall see. I noticed most of the books that I picked were more along the lines of I'm intimidated of them because of their size, which is a little strange because like I can sit and grab Julie Klassen book and her books like border on huge. Like they're 400 pages at least, but I can sit and blow through it in like one to two days. So what I need to do is get off my high horse get off my scaredy cat horse and just jump in and read them because I feel like there are so many books that I'm really going to enjoy. So that's what I need to do, honestly. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and seen what books intimidate Alicia and how big of a scaredy cat this girl is to pick up books by authors she's never read or books that are massive. Again. We're going to try to fix that this year. Hopefully you will see a couple of these books on my um, wrap-ups throughout the year because I am wanting to read my shelves. And we shall see. We shall see. Hey, who knows? Maybe I'll find a new favorite book in this pile or a new favorite series. I don't know. I would love to know if you guys have read any of these books or what intimidates you when in books that you read. Is it size? Is it something... That you've never read before or something else. I don't know. What intimidates you? Let's find out. I would love to know. Also keep your eyes peeled for a companion video to this one where I talk about series that intimidate me because I have a few of those. I'm just intimidated by a lot of things. Like I love my favorite authors and their instant buys for me. And I buy tons of books, and then I'm kind of intimidated to pick them up. And I just need to get over myself, which I've already talked about. So there's that. Yeah. I hopefully will see.
see if you guys are interested or if I'm in the mood. I guess it really depends. Once I read some of these books, I will probably maybe even post blogs reviews about them. If not, I'll, I'm definitely going to be reviewing them on Goodreads. So you can follow me on Goodreads. The link is in the description box below. You could also follow my blog ah! for the love of Christian Fiction .com. And you can also even follow me on Instagram for the love of Christian Fiction. Every other link are, of course, down in the description. Go ahead and connect with me. I'd love to hear from you guys. Or you can shoot me a comment in the comment box below and I can chat with you guys there. I hope you guys have a great day. And I think that's it. I'll see you guys later. Bye!